already. We're talking with Mark Farner. It's been about five years since I've seen him in person when he last played over the Pima County Fair for the 50th anniversary. But Mark, you have a new album coming out and it's called Closer to My Home. Or is it already out, Mark? No, it's coming out November 8th, Larry. Uh, the, the singles are being released in advance, of course, but the actual release date is November 8th. So yeah, the album's called Closer to My Home and a bunch of new music on there and a bunch of collaborations. But I've noticed that you re-recorded I'm Your Captain, I'm Your Captain Closer to Home. Uh, yeah. It's the 55th anniversary of that song. Why did you pick that tune to do? Well, you know, since, uh, well, about 15 years ago, a friend of mine uh, sent me a link and he said, when you get done watching this, call me. And so I, I watched this link and it was about this dude that had a 15 inch speaker, you know, a, a driver in, in a single cabinet sitting next to a kiddie pool on a deck. He had a tone generator and an amplifier. He dialed in A2, which is, you know, it's low on the scale, A2 uh, at 440, the, which is American standard since 1953, 440 tuning standard, and a lot of the world is tuned in at 440, but at 440, A2 at 125 decibels, and brother, you know, pain starts at 90 decibels, so we're talking loud. It put chop on that kiddie pool. It was just, it was like froth, man. It was like, man, the, the big storm, you know? Then he shuts it down. He scales down to four, three, two, count backwards from four, four, three, two, which was the American standard prior to 1953. Why they changed, I could not tell you, but I think there was something absolutely wrong with that because what happened the same note a2 432 scale at 125 decibels it's a piece of glass brother it is flat there's not even the slightest movement quiver nothing and i went holy i so i called him back i said okay man you got my attention what is this and then he proceeds to tell me how this, it's uh, 432 is part of the Selfeggio scale. And he goes on to tell me about some of the, you know, the reasoning that he has reasoned uh, that it changed. And and uh, he says, if you got a, an acoustic guitar, I want you to tune your acoustic guitar to 432 and uh, and treat yourself to, to some love. So I tuned my uh, guild. I, I had a... Uh, uh, D52 Guild, American-made Guild, tuned it to 432. And at, at the end of the intonation of each of the six strings, there's this little whistle, dude. It's like this, you know, right? And I'm going, wow, what is that? But then I played my guitar in my kitchen. And, you know, in the kitchen with all the reflective surfaces, it's a beautiful place to play your acoustic guitar. So I've been in 432 ever since. And this version of I'm Your Captain is recorded in 432. And it is a very comfortable frequency. It's not fighting anything. It's a wonderful frequency. And when you get to understand frequencies and the relevancy of what that frequency means to us here in a physiological sense, mm -hmm. then... Uh, then you would really appreciate why um, some songs, even uh, hit songs, brother, were already, they were recorded in 432. Let me remind you of one, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Ohio. When really? that song comes on, when it comes on the radio, when, when it comes on, Larry, everybody, everybody's head turns. And I noticed this because we play it on stage. And it's in the same frequency it was recorded in, the same scale, 432. So I am happy to announce I'm your captain in 432, brother. Yeah, it's in a it's an amazing version. The recording sounds like your your vo your voice, man. How do you keep your voice in shape, you know, after all these years? 
exercise by reason of use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, man. You know, I've seen a lot of contemporaries, older your age and younger, who have just decimated their voice and they just can't do it anymore. And I saw you five years ago. I heard the new songs. Your voice is still there. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I really enjoy singing. When I'm in the woods, I'm singing. When I'm out in the barn, I'm singing. When I'm down in the garden, I'm singing. I'm singing all the time. In the car, I'm singing. I have, I have not turned on a radio in an automobile or truck in, I can't tell you, 40, 50 years. Did I just, just do not listen. Yeah. Uh, I have, I'm a songwriter and I can't let anything get in the way of maybe it's the next hit song, brother. That makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. I mean? yeah, man. So, you know, you tell me about the new album. Uh, you got some special guests on it. I already know who they are, but I want to hear you tell me who's on this record with you. Well, Mark Slaughter, who produced this record uh, closer to my home. He not only uh, did some background vocals with me, he also played guitar on some stuff. He played bass on some stuff. He played the drums from the electronic keyboard. Oh, <laughs> in, wow. Into, and he he's just got great feel. Uh, Mark was on, um, it was Howard Stern, we were doing rock and roll fantasy camp, New York city. And Howard called up David Fishoff, who runs the uh, rock and roll fantasy camp. And he said, I hear you got Mark Farner over there. And David goes, yeah, man. He says, I want him to come here on my show and play. I'm your captain. And, and then, so David came to me, he says, would you want to go over there and do that show? And I said, who are we going to use? Cause we, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of talent there. So it was, Kip Winger on bass. Wow. Uh, Sandy Gennaro from, from Joan Jett and the Black Hearts on drums. Uh, Teddy Zigzag from Guns N' Roses on keyboard. Uh, Bruce Kulick from Kiss when they didn't have the makeup on. And Mark Slaughter and myself. And uh, so when I was standing two feet away, you know, it's a small, it's a, you know, television studio. So it's small. But we sat up and we played, and it was great. It was just magic moments. Uh, so I was hearing Mark, like I said, he was standing two feet away from me. I'm hearing him sing, and I said, dude, man, you were hitting all those notes, and you, it, it very clear and in right spot on. And he says, I'm going to send you some of my stuff I want you to listen to. So he sent me some stuff and, and uh, some of his new music, and I just really noted good production, good sonic quality guitars right where they needed to be. Not, you know, overpowering anything else, but just sitting there like big, bad guitars. And uh, so I called him up and I said, man, you did a good job on this. So this is amazing. Where did you do this? He says, right here in my studio. He oh, says, I want to extend an invitation to you to come and record. I want to record you, man. He says, I want to be your producer. I really think I could do a good job. And I'm going, man, is pinch me. Is this really happening? <laughs> you know, he's, he's got native American blood in him as well. So we, we make a good team. And, uh, and this album is uh, a lot of us. In fact, he co-wrote any more with me. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I had it almost uh, done, and I was going to work on the the last verse when I was there. But I'm singing along, doing you know a rough vocal because you you use a rough vocal to to do everything else too. And I'm singing, and he goes, he starts singing, and I'm going, oh yeah, man, that fits good right there. That's oh that's perfect. And so he wrote the second verse, and it was great. It was spontaneous. It was on the money. And I'm proud to share the song with him 50-50, man. Wow. And then I, I also noticed you got a member of Survivor. Oh, yeah. Well, J Jim Peterick, him and I collaborated on Friends Forever, which is only found on the CD or on the, on the downloads. It's not on the vinyl because, as you know, brother, you can only fit so much music on one of those plastic discs. Yes. And... Uh, yeah, so we had too much, and and we said let's make this uh, the CD a special CD by putting 
friends forever on there. So Jim Peterick, uh, he's on there playing uh, lead guitar and rhythm guitar on Friends Forever. Of course, I played uh, bass on it and I played uh, some guitar as well. But uh, it's good to have people that, you know, Jim's been around a long time and he's very uh, successful songwriter. And he's and he's just right here with you and I. He could sit here and have a conversation with us. I mean, you know, he's he's not allowed himself to expand uh, his his head to grow. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, where do you find your lyrical and musical inspiration? Let's talk. Where do you find your lyrical inspiration? Uh, from within, uh, it's everything that I've heard. You know, I, I'm I'm a. Uh, Somebody will say something and then I'll finish it with a rhyme. It's just the way I am. Uh, I'm a I'm a songwriter and I'm hearing, you know, I'm inspired by the way people, they express things or, you know, the way they, it just it comes off their tongue and I finish it up with something. And they go, hey, that could be a song. And I go, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just there, man. Do you, I've not do you... had any trouble with it. Do you, do you write uh, like the melody first or do you come up with the lyrics first and then try to find a, a melody to go with it? It, it? it just, it's both ways. I mean, uh, a lot of times in the early days, I would come up with a riff, Larry, you know, just some chords and some riffing. And the guys would go like, what's that? And I said, I don't know. I'm just now getting it, you know? And they go, okay, man, we'll go down and uh, grab something to eat. And you finish that up and we'll come back. And and that's the way it happened. The whole first album was kind of like that. We we're practicing in the uh, in the musicians union hall in Flint, Michigan, because uh, we're all union members. And uh, th those guys would leave. They'd come back, bring in the burgers and malts and fries. And, you know, I'd, I'd say, OK, man, here it is. And we'd we'd learn it. And go on to the next one, you know. So, do you get inspired? Like you talked about, you driving your car. You don't have a radio on. It's just you and your and your thoughts. Um, do you ever like wake up in the middle of the night? Go, wait a minute. There's something, and then you got to write it down, or get maybe a phone that you record a little bit of it into. Yes, as a matter of fact, Larry, that's how I'm your captain came about in the first place. I got done saying my prayers, and I put a little P.S. on there. Now this is back in 1970, mm -hmm. so. I put this PS on there and I said, God, would you please give me a song that would reach and touch the hearts of those you want to get to? That was it, dude. Just real clear and simple. When I woke up at 3, 3.30, when, whatever time it was, when I woke up and sat up, I wasn't thinking, oh, this is the answer to my prayer. I was not even there. I couldn't even think. I was in such a foggy state of mind. I was somewhere between heaven and earth in my mindset, but I always keep a steno pad and a pencil right next to my bed because, dude, I have lost too many other songs, you know, by thinking, oh, I'll just remember that in the morning. And you never remember it ever. <laughs> so, yeah. So I grab and I start writing and the song's coming. And uh, it's just, you know, it's not like... I've ever written another song this way. It just came, all the words are coming. Uh, a lot of times songwriters will write the verse, the first verse, and they'll get a idea started for the second verse. And they'll go back to the top, Larry, and they'll read that first verse over again, kind of keep them in the flow. And they'll, you know, keep rehashing what they've written. I knew better than to do that on this particular moment. I was writing and I knew that if I took my eyes to the top of the page, I would be, I would not be in the same place. So I kept writing, kept writing, kept writing. And when I got done with all the lyrics to this song, to I'm your captain, I was spent, man, physically, mentally, emotionally, I was spent. And I laid that steno pad down on my nightstand roll back under the sheet and I was gone, man, like a turkey through the corn a day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm serious. I was out. Wow. Got up, got up in the morning and I'm playing my acoustic guitar in the kitchen, sipping a coffee. 
And I started playing, the bop, and bop, and bop, and do, 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 do. And I'll, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, I grab a, I grab a C chord that I'd never played this inversion of a C before. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, wow, that is a nice chord. And I'm, I'm listening to the harmonics and the chime. And as I'm studying my hand, so I don't forget it, the, the notion came to me, go get those words. <laughs> so I went in, grabbed that steno pad, brought it out. I hit the red button on my Sony cassette recorder <laughs> and I recorded it, took it to rehearsal that day and we worked it out. It was great to, to have that experience. And I told him guys how it happened. I said, you know, I prayed for it and here it is. So this has got to be a hit. <laughs> how, how does it feel like here it is 55 years later and people like, you know, you just mentioned Howard Stern, people are like, Hey man, can you play that song? I like, you know, there, there, there's musicians who wish they could find, I, you've obviously had more than one big hit, but yeah. there's musicians who pray for that. Just one, you got multiple, but it's still gotta be a cool feeling to look out in a crowd and see people of all ages singing lyrics that you wrote at three 30 in the morning. Yeah, man. And especially when I'm doing a military crowd, like we did a, a show for 10,000 troops in Germany and Schweinfurt, Germany, and there were about 30,000 uh, civilian, you know, Germans there. Uh, but to know as, as my brothers and sisters out there in uniform are singing that song and what that means to them, because they all really want to be closer to home, yeah, dude, absolutely. you know, they want to be where you and I live and, uh, and that's their hope. And especially during the Vietnam war era, a lot of the guys, to have told me, you know, um, that song got me through Farner. That song was, was my hope to get home. And, and as a matter of fact, the Vietnam veterans of America voted to see what the favorite song was. It was I'm your captain. Really? Yeah. That's gotta be such a great feeling for you. It is. It is. My dad was a war two veteran tank driver in the second or seventh armor division. Came home with four bronze medals, you know, lived through four major battles. My mother was the first woman in the United States to weld on Sherman tanks at Fisher Body in Flint, Michigan. So wow, I have a rich history in, in the blood, in the family. Um, all my dad's uh, brothers, the, his three other brothers were all military. And uh, to, to have, to know that kind of, sense and to have that mentality and hear them talk and the sincerity that they have after having been, you know, laying their safety on the line to protect yours and mine, brother. Yeah. It's uh it makes a different person out of you. So tell me a little bit about some of the other songs on the album. You've mentioned, you know, the collaborations. Uh tell me a little bit about the uh, the upcoming singles that you got happening. Real uh, real it was written good night, probably, uh, 15, at least 15 years ago, but it was, it was a different riff. Um, uh, but I, but I still had these same lyrics and I wanted to sing them. And when I started playing this other riff that we ended up with, I was home and I sent it, you know, I took my uh, cell phone, I recorded it. And I sent it to Slaughter and I said, hey, this riff, um, I want to put this with a song that I wrote, you know, years ago. What do you think about this? He goes, oh, man. He says, I really like that riff. He says, I'm th I'm hearing stuff already. So I just kind of did a little short version of it and sent it to him. And uh, man, he uh, he loved it. He said, this can actually cross over. He says, it's rock. And he said, some of the country people might even pick up on this because of the guitar, the nature of the guitar. It's uh, it's in drop D, but it's got some droning strings going on. And I play slide guitar on it. And I didn't play slide guitar until uh, 2012 when I died, had this uh, pacemaker put in and I died. But I, when I came back, I brought something back with me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. 
And and then and the other, I, I heard a few of the different songs, you know, uh, on a quick little file that they sent me a while back. But uh, what else you got coming out on the album uh, besides real? Yeah, well, I've got uh, uh, the song that I that I was talking about uh, anymore, mm-hmm. and that's it's a song that's uh, really emphasizes what uh, forgiveness can do for a heart, and uh, it is actually for forgiveness is uh, the definition of love. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a one word. Love is forgiveness. And it's something that we need to, as individuals, really understand and, and uh, define it for our own sake. Because a lot of us hold ourselves responsible for things uh, we screwed up somehow, you know, yeah. and we, we got regret. And that regret is a form of debt consciousness. You're, you're holding yourself in debt to something. We have to love ourselves uh, the way God loves us and let ourselves off the hook and, and letting other people off the hook. Because if we forgive with the same measure that we expect to be forgiven with, dude, uh, this would be a pretty happy place. Also forgive yourself. Yes, man. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So are you are you going on the road? Are, are, are you doing a 55th anniversary, uh, supporting the album on the road? And, and yes. when's that all starting? Yes, I'm I, the end of this month. <laughs> oh, wow. OK. Yeah, man. Um, I've got a good band. But we've been out together for years and I love playing with these guys. It's a it's a funky, you know, it's a groove. Every time we get on the stage, we. We really, all of us enjoy each other. We love each other, man. We're brothers the way it should be. And then the music comes across that way uh, without any uh, leaders except love is leading us all, you know. So I've seen you obviously in concert uh, a couple of times. For anybody who maybe has not experienced a Mark Farner concert, what can they expect? Well, they can expect, uh, you know, because I wrote 92% of the Grand Funk catalog, they can expect to hear some Grand Funk. All right. And some of my solo stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, brother, uh, Ohio. Uh, I love playing it. I love seeing the people's reaction because it's, it was a time that was very shocking to a lot of people, you know, that our own military uh, shot and killed four of our kids, our children. Um uh, and nobody was held responsible. It's uh, it's something that should never have happened, and we should never allow it to happen again. So, uh, it's stuff like this in a live show and being able to express and and share your heart from the stage. A lot of people are coming and uh, and getting set free. Seriously, uh, I've had so many people thank me for for not holding back. And so, you know, I try not to get carried away because man, I got so much on my heart. I could, I could talk to people for an hour, but I need to play the music and let the music do its talking. Yeah. And so, and, and that's my, my wife, Lisa, who's uh, we've been married to be 47 years uh, this January 8th. Uh, so Congratulations. I yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that brother. Yeah. So it, it, if people want to uh, keep up with you, maybe you know, find out when, where you're playing, when, you, when you're going to hit their town, um, hopefully Tucson one of these days soon. Um, yeah. Tell us where where, the, where can they find all the information about Mark Farner? Markfarner.com. Cool. And are you on social media as well? Yes. Uh, Mark, Mark Farner's American Band okay. on Facebook and Instagram. And also I want to mention that the pre-sales, which are, on sale now for the album and the cds are all autographed by me seriously Uh, oh dude yeah and and they're printed right here in michigan third man records and i stopped on our way back we played jeep fest in toledo ohio here about uh, three four weeks ago and i stopped in on the way back north uh i stopped into third man and signed 990 album covers. <laughs> 990? Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I and I signed a thousand uh CD covers, 
you know, it's just something I know that if people, um, they can get a signed autograph to copy, they really enjoy it because then they've got something that's been personalized by me. And, uh, yeah, it makes it special. I like it special. Well, Mark, I'm looking forward to hearing the entire album closer to my home. You said it's going to be out on November 8th, on November 8th. And yes. uh, Mark, looking forward to hopefully seeing you in Southern Arizona again soon on a tour. Yeah, man. I, I, I saw you at the Pima County Fair a few years ago and you were amazing. And uh, you were a pleasure to talk to that day and a pleasure to talk to today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for your time today and uh, for all the listeners out there. Set yourself free. All right. MarkFarner.com if you want to follow him. And the new album, Closer to My Home, November 8th. Get it. And, uh, of course, he's got some autograph copies as well. All the details at MarkFarner.com. All, yeah. All the pre-sales. All the pre-sale copies are autographed. All the pre-sales. Yeah, man. If I got to sign 5,000 more, good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mark, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Larry.